Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Favorite Album of the Year. Today, we have arrived at 1983. Another pretty strong year for album releases, specifically, you know, one of my favorite genres, you know, the heavy genre or genres, hard rock and heavy metal. A lot of great uh, stuff coming out. But, you know, you still got real some really good pop and new wave and things like that, all sorts of good stuff. But for me, again, 1983, I was 17 years old. A lot of great metal coming out by new bands, by established bands, by new bands from established bands people, singers, guitar players, uh, super groups, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of stuff. Um, and again, like I do almost every year, it, it's usually when I start looking at the releases from the year, there's usually always one kind of front runner. Uh, this one, there was kind of three of them. And then there was a handful of others that I really, really love a lot that I knew weren't going to take over the number one spot, but it was just, all right, so we got to figure out who's going to be the runner up. But I, after kind of some debate going over and over again, I kind of, I settled on an album that I know is really special to a lot of people. It's very special to me. It's my favorite album from this group. It's also, and some of you called it, some of you didn't, um, it's also the first album from a new group, from a guy who left a very notable band. That's a big favorite of mine. It features a red-hot up-and-coming young guitar player who would play on this album and a couple more before going off and doing all sorts of other things. And I just, uh, I love this singer a lot. I miss him a lot. Released May 25th, 1983, produced by the singer himself, Ronnie James Dio. Holy Diver by Dio. Fresh from his stint in Black Sabbath, right, for Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, and Live Evil. He puts together his own band, with Jimmy Bain with Vivian Campbell, Vinny Apice. A great album. Classic Dio album. Classic Dio in general. Um... You know, I just, I had a hard time. There's a lot of other really, really great albums that are, I love a lot from this year. But I don't know, this, something about, this album is really special to me. It was when I was a kid. It's still special to me now. Uh, you know, Stand Up and Shout, one of the greatest album opers ever. All right. You got the amazing title track, Epic, Grand, Majestic. I absolutely adore Holy Diver, the song. Uh, Gypsy, Kick-Ass, Caught in the Middle. Catchy, great riffs. All right, don't talk to strangers. Probably the sleeper out, the sleeper song from this album. Absolutely incredible. So powerful, so emotional. Uh, straight through the heart. Snarling heavy metal rocker right there. Okay, invisible. Another good riff heavy driving song. Rainbow in the dark, the most well known song from this album and from Dio's catalog. Uh, somewhat of a hit, right? Very catchy. Very kind of uh, bright and anthemic, All right, a classic Dio track. And then, of course, uh, Shame on the Night to kind of finish it all off. Dark and evil and menacing, very reminiscent of his Black Sabbath days. Just a classic album. Any other artwork here? Nah, it's basically the same. I want to see if I had anything else to show you here. From the booklet. Yeah, just good stuff. Really good stuff. Nothing really else to show you on the inside other than like a tiny black and white pictures, but I think uh, most of you know this album well. It's my favorite from 1983. My runner-up, you might ask. Well, I think I'm going to surprise a lot of you with my runner-up because I think uh, so many of you picked that I was... Actually, a good amount of you picked Holy Diver and Peace of Mind by Iron Maiden as either going to be the top or the second, you know, the runner up or whatever, you, whatever. And man, peace of mind was right there. But I kept going back to another. And it's one of those albums that it's usually with most people who like this band or are in, you know, someone into this band, it's a love hate thing. Okay. For me, it's always been a love love because on this band, they had one of my favorite singers of all time, from my other beloved band, come join this band for one album and tour I'm talking about. Born Again from Black Sabbath. 
I know some of you are going to be like, how the hell is he picking that over peace of mind? Not easy. I absolutely love Peace of Mind. That just goes to show you my depth of love for these two releases because Peace of Mind is my favorite Maiden album of all time. I love it. Absolutely love it. But I don't quite love it more than this. I love Ian Gillen in Black Sabbath, even if it was only for this brief time. Um, sorry, guys. You know, I know there's people who despise this album. There's people like me who love it. <clears throat> it's kind of like, you know, there's, there's no almost no middle ground. Very rarely have I met anybody who's like, yeah, Born Again, it's okay. It's usually either I love Born Again, it's like, oh, I hate it. Don't like Gillen and Sabbath, don't like the production. Songs are really, you know, blah, you know, whatever. But one of their heaviest albums ever, Gillen, sounds fantastic on here, Screaming Up a Storm. And that's not to discredit Peace of Mind. That's not to discredit uh, Victims of the Future by um, Gary Moore. Or, just, uh, I mean, I had a couple others that were up in the running, man, I'm telling you. Um, what else we got here, you know? Merciful Fate, Melissa, Alcatraz, No Pearl from Rock and Roll, Yes, 90125, Thin Lizzy, Thunder and Lightning, you know, Marillion, Script for a Jester's Tear, Sabotage, Sirens, Fastway, the original Fastway album. And how about Metallica, Kill Em All? You know, some great, great, those are all the ones that were right up at the top for me that I was sitting there thinking and twisting and like, oh man. But when it came down to it, I had to go with the Sabbath connection for both Ronnie James Dio, the Dio band, their debut Holy Diver, and the runner up. Black Sabbath Born Again, but you know, we're all going to have different favorites from that year, and uh, that's totally cool. It's the way it should be. It's what music is all about. We all should be hearing things differently. We all should love different stuff, and uh, that's the power of music. So in the comments below, list your favorite or your favorites from 1983, and then of course tomorrow, we've got 1984 coming up. Also a great year. Okay, I notice, uh, when watching the comments, I know there's like people who are really, really big prog fans are kind of like, they're like, at the 80s, no good, but all the metal fans are chiming in now, because, you know, not a, the 80s was not a great year for classic prog, that was the 70s thing, and, and the 70s was more about that, and classic rock, and hard rock, and now all of a sudden, all the, the metal fans are like, yes, the 80s, my favorite decade, so, um, is what it is, right? So <clears throat> we all love what we love, and that's the way it should be. So visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Lots of great stuff coming up this weekend. Uh, we're going to do some top 10 songs of Merciful Fate, top 10 songs of Hammerfall, uh, more favorite albums of the year. Obviously, 84 and 85 are going to happen this weekend. And uh, I got other stuff up my sleeve that you'll have to just wait and see for. So uh, take care, and we'll see you soon. All right, bye-bye.